and uh, the exact opposite happened. They were beaten handily, 124-92. They were assaulted last night. <laughs> they were really, it was bad. SGA with a playoff career high, 33 points. Chet had 26, he had 15 of those in the first. Uh, Valanciunas with 19, seven rebounds. No Pelicans player had 20 points. So I, look, <clears> they, they squeaked one out in the first game, awesome. They are young, that's to be expected. I don't know that this was to be expected in game two. No, and, and more games like this is when they're going to start getting more trust in media and fans and opponents. Like when you're watching this game, it's this was an all-out just dominating performance. And, and this was, they weren't nervous. The first game, I remember my first playoff game, it was actually in Oklahoma City. I was <laughs> nervous as shit. How could you like, not be? Like I, it was a different game. The atmosphere is different. The physicality is different. You could tell these three guys in particular, my they goodness. settled in. They, they were comfortable. Chet got off to an unbelievable start. Um, Shea has just been as dominant as he's been all year long. Uh, but this team, it, for, for whatever happened in the last 48 hours, they literally looked like this poised vet team. They looked like how the Pelicans should have looked, but they're just way more talented. Yeah. So it's, it's, this team is scary. This team, when, you, when they start performing like this and they start showing us this, that they can compete in this, and this stage is not too big for them. It doesn't matter. They've never been here before because they're here now. <laughs> this, this, this was an unbelievable win. That, again, I just didn't see coming. I it mean, was dead wrong again. But dead now wrong. let's see how they do it on the road. Can they go into New Orleans and can they be mature and can they literally end this series in New Orleans, get some rest and get off their feet waiting for the next opponent? Uh, we got to take the training wheels off. This team is dead serious. Clearly. This is, yeah, this, is, this team is dead serious, man. They're getting a lot of really good production from a lot of different guys. They're big three. On top of that, outside of that, uh, Giddy, Dort, those guys are playing lights oh. out. And when you watch this basketball team, it never looked like they're 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 out of sync. Mm -mm. Never looked like they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. The offense is flowing smoothly on defense. They're communicating. They're scrambling around. They're putting pressure on the. They're putting pressure on the ball. This is a this is a basketball team that we've tried to use um, youth as an Achilles heel for them when they're using yeah. it to their strength. They're the real deal. Yeah, it's not even that. I I think it's just a beautiful place to be if you're Oklahoma City because whatever happens, we're good with. Let it go. Let well, it go, Chandler. Well, I, I, saw, I saw your eyes What were you going to say? You said beautiful place to be. I thought, um, Not literally. My thing Not is, spiritually. I, I lost my train of thought. I had a good point to say. But this team, there's such a mismatched nightmare because they can go. They have such a good small ball lineups. So when you start Chet at the five, I thought that would be an issue. I thought he would, his right. body would take a toll. I thought he'd get banged up. I thought going against a guy like Valanciunas. Well, it looked like it in game one. Like Valanciunas would dominate him, right? But now, when you see him step out like this, and when he's making the three ball like this, it expands the entire floor, and that gives guys like Jalen Williams, that gives guys like SGA, Giddy to probe the paint and find shooters. And then they surround guys, and they find guys like Isaiah Joe and Aaron and, and, and Williams and Gordon Hayward, and they, they've, they created so much space based on this small ball lineup. So. Me and Conrad were talking earlier. Can you imagine next year, like this team, if they add like a vet, rugged yeah. big? They're the instant favorites. They're already nice without a big like that. With a, they their backup assets. big is Biombo and Mike Muscala, and they don't even play because no. they're just so good and so talented and go so small that no one can guard them. Right. That's think, crazy. Listen, they don't get a lot of production from their bench either. You know, so when we talk when we talk about bench play, if your starters are good enough, it really doesn't matter. That like these and they're guys, young, but so they have young. guys like Casey Wallace that are def in at the end of the game playing defense. They have guys like Isaiah Joe Wiggins, like Kendrick Kendrick Williams. They they have so many guys that they do play and they do have this deep bench. They, they but they play, are very they reliant play 13 on thirteen guys less. Though. It's ridiculous. They, I'm telling you, it's like an AU it's team. Unfair. They just sub in and they, they don't miss a beat. It's a, it's. It's a beautiful thing to watch, Chandler. It's, it's a crazy. Place they to shot sixty percent from the field yeah, last night. It's ridiculous. Uh, Shams, this one, <laughs> this one was fun. SGA, what'd you think? I mean, every team follows the lead of their of their number one player, and I think SGA, what he stands for, how he is on and off the floor. The, they obviously take his persona, his personality, how he is. I spoke to Chet Holmgren a few weeks ago, and he told me because of the fact that that Shea moves with no. Jealousy, no ego. It's really non-existent throughout the roster there. And that's why, I mean, Chandler and Lou, you guys have been a part of uh, great teams with great star players. You, you're going to take the personality at times of your best player. And SGA is that for this team. Shout out. He had some great vets, Lou included. But this is a team that went from the number 10 seed to the number one seed. We, that, that's part of the MVP case for, for SGA. And uh, the second straight year, averaging 30 points per game, most 30-point games in the league this season. And their core is so good. 
so deadly, and SGA is still just 25 years old. I will say, when you're when you have a star player like that, usually there's some sort of animosity, right? There's some sort of ego. There's some sort amongst of power trip amongst the team oh, okay. in that locker room. It doesn't feel, and I don't know SGA at all. You know much your guy. He's just one of the guys. He just happens to be their best like. player by far, and he dominates this, the game. But it, it just seems like he is their leader, but he's also one of them. He, yeah. he doesn't expect more. He doesn't want to get treated differently. I guarantee you he's just practicing just as much as them. He's not late to film. I guarantee you he is that type of best player on like the team. <clears throat> and most guys aren't. Well, you see the commercials, right? Like, you see post-game. They all just sort of jumble around like kids. The commercial for the playoffs where each team has one representative, OKC's the three. Right. So it's it's very much a different Yeah, they're doing interviews together after yeah, the game. They're barking. They're yeah. hooting and hollering together. I guarantee you they're hanging off the court. And that is unbelievable. And also, we always talk, they have so many draft picks it's, and so many assets. It's like They are by far in the best shape. And then there's everyone else down here because what they've done, it, it's Patience. incredible. Um, but yeah, having him as your leader, as just a humble, genuine dude, really is nuts. You know what, I, I love the fact that he's, he's SGA now. Because when we were teammates, he didn't have a nickname. A nickname wasn't, he was just Shay. you know you're the guy. When he, yeah, he was, I mean, he was, just, too, he was just, he was just Shay. And anything and everything that was asked of Shay, he did it with a smile on his face. And he had a great attitude about it. And he was always willing to work. He was always willing to learn and listen. And it's, pay it's paying off for him. And now that he's in a leadership position, it's easy for that to translate over to him being the lead guy on a team because he's always been a great follower. Anytime you're a great follower and you're put in a position to lead, you know what it takes for guys to follow your lead. And he's been able to he, accomplish that. He's also it's just so mature. He hits a big shot. He's telling his kids, he's telling his teammates to like, kids, relax. Exactly. He's <laughs> telling his, him, him, him to relax. In interviews, he's just so humble and graceful the way he carries himself. It really is crazy what he's done and how he carries himself on the court. It's, he is a leader at 25 years old. It's, it is very impressive. They're in a good place. I know it'd be funny after if they swept the Pelicans, he's like, and that's why I'm your MVP. Just calmly said it. Yeah, I mean, like, but think about it. Have you ever seen him like bitch at the ref? You ever see him and like you overreact? You ever see, and, he, and he you is won't. just the same, he is cold blooded. Honestly, he's he's, a, he's an even kill type of kid, and I and I'm just I'm thrilled just to see who's who he's turned into. He um, may get my MVP vote all of a sudden. Had mine. You don't have one. <laughs> mm, but do if I, you did. Do I? <laughs>